Hey, what's up everybody? How's it going? It's Jeff. Glowing zero zero cabbage, or just glowing cabbage, doesn't matter. Um, here to answer a thread from Lazarus. Uh, excellent, excellent thread idea. One record from each year of the 80s. Ones that you would prefer to, you know, suggest, suggest that people check out kind of thing. So, uh, I really had fun looking for this. I was really quite surprised though. I couldn't really, I had a hard time finding a record from 1983. But I ended up finding a pretty good one in the end. But I don't have many from 1983, I've realized. Um, so, anyways, I agree with uh, most people's sentiments that the 80s were really quite underrated and there was a lot of, a lot of music. You know, and, and the records, the 10 records that I've, that I've selected go right across the board, so as far as genres and stuff like that. I'm going to start in 1980, which is where I should be starting, with Split Ends, True Colors. This is a phenomenal record. I really love the Split Ends. They're a New Zealand based band. This was released on, on four, four different color uh, combinations on the cover here. Um, it's really amazing stuff, and I'll show you something else to, to uh, you know, to get away from copyright infringement or like, you know, they uh, they made the record very, very etched. It doesn't affect the playing at all, but I really love this idea. Really neat, really neat stuff. But uh, yeah, so the split ends, true colors. Really great if you, if you don't know about the split ends, I know Yalavox, you, you, you're a big fan of them, and so am I. I think I have almost all of their records too. So, but then again, I thought that about XTC and I had like five or six of them that I didn't have. So, anyway, so there's 1980. Now let's go to 1981. And uh, I know a lot of you know about King Crimson, but uh, if you don't know, the guitarist for King Crimson was Robert Fripp, and he is an absolute genius, if you ask me. Um, this is one of the solo albums, The League of Gentlemen. I was doing some research on this on uh, YouTube, and I, or not YouTube, sorry, Wikipedia, and uh, I found out that a lot of the other people that play on this album went on to other bands that are that I love, you know, like, uh, and I didn't know this, but uh, uh, Sarah, a girl named Sarah Lee, that's her name, anyway, Sarah Lee, she went on, she plays bass on this record, she later formed with Gang of Four, the B-52s, and the Indigo Girls. And there's a guy who uh, plays keys, Barry Andrews, later joined XTC, and then after that, Shriekback, who are two of my favorites from the 80s also. Uh, this is a great record, here's the back. They featured uh, their entire tour on the back of the record. So, there's 1981 Robert Fripp, League of Gentlemen. And I added this one. I know it's probably not everybody's favorite from this year, but I went back to when I discovered this music, and it literally it literally blew me away. I became a Michael Jackson fanatic. I'll admit it. I was a Michael Jackson fanatic. I had posters on the wall. I wanted the uh, the, the jacket. You know, uh, I couldn't afford like the. The, you know the uh, glittery gloves so I just bedazzled like a gardener's glove like I was a huge fan and so 1983 or sorry 1982 Michael Jackson's Thriller still to this day the best-selling record of all time estimated 110 million copies of this record have been sold can you believe that I can't believe that it's crazy so in case you wanted to get the uh, full centerfold picture, and there's a little uh, furry buddy there. All right, so next, completely changing gears completely from Michael Jackson to 1983's The Talking Heads. Uh, the Talking Heads speaking in tongues. I have two versions of this. Uh, this is a uh, there's a limited edition Robert Rush tag. Uh, uh, record that was released that won an award. Uh, this one in particular is absolutely amazing. This is probably one of my favorite Talking Heads records. There's so many though. They're all really good. Um, there's the back. It's a really amazing record, especially the track uh, Swamp. Man, I love that tune. It's so good. 
All right, now, in my previous video, when I did a response, um, what was it? Uh, I was talking about my break dancing, <laughs> and the teacher, I know you want me to uh, do a video, and you just never know, you know? I might set it up. I might set it up to do a few moves. I still, I still do a few moves, and then, like, basically, like, ah, ah. Well, I usually have to be drinking in order to really break dance. I'm a little shy, but you never know. There might be a surprise break dance video coming for you folks. All right. So, anyway, this is the first break dance music record. Uh, it was on tape, of course, but it was the first one I ever heard in my entire life. What are you doing? It's Charlie. Hey, Charlie. Oh, hi, Charlie. Oh, you double boy. So, yeah, this was the very first music I've ever heard of breakdance music. And I used to break, I used to actually breakdance to this. Uh, and it has a lot of the, uh, a, lot of, a lot of shitty songs actually now that, you know, I re-listen to it. But, uh, but not Rocket, man. Rocket is like right up there. And then there's Wheels of Steel by Grandmaster Flash and The Furious Five. And uh, Tour de France. Uh, you know, I don't know. And then on the other side, like this side, is all instructional, so it tells you how to do it, but it doesn't tell like sort of rap music by Alex and the City Crew. So anyway, this is a pretty neat record if you don't I mean, I don't know. It's a book it's it's totally a time capsule for sure. So yeah. So that was so that was 1984, okay? So now we're going to 1985. Echo and the Bunnyman. Songs to learn and sing. Basically a best of from Echo and the Bunnyman. Um, sort of my introduction to Echo and the Bunnymen, but I love The Killing Moon. That's an amazing song. Um, yeah, just, oh man. And this is a promo copy too with that, so. Echo and the Bunnymen, Songs to Learn and Sing, 1984. On to 1985. This is probably my favorite album by this band. And um, yeah, it's just, it's, Stellar from beginning to end, it's amazing. If you don't have this record, get it. XTC Skylarking. 1980. This is 1986. This I didn't know this, but this album was produced by Todd Rundgren. So it's pretty. It's pretty amazing, man. First one I ever heard. Every tune on it. Summer's Cauldron, Grass, The Meeting Place. That's really super, super girl. I, I especially love uh, A Thousand Umbrellas. That's an amazing song. And then like, The Man Who Sailed Around His Soul. Just a great, big day. Just a great record, man. Check it out if you don't already have it. XTC Skylark. All right, 1987. We're approaching 10 minutes here. 1987, The Cure. Kiss Me, Kiss Me, Kiss Me. Took me a while to catch on to The Cure, to be honest. But when I did, I was hooked. You know, it's like back in the '80s. It took me a while to uh, catch on to them, but this is a this is an amazing record too. Um, oh, it's, I thought it was Gatefold, but it's not. Anyway, it's like uh, so. Kiss me, kiss me, kiss me. The Cure. It's got a lot of uh, it's got a lot of great tunes on it, like uh, Just Like Heaven, which was covered by Dinosaur Jr. I believe. Um, hot, hot, hot. Oh, Shiver and Shake. Really good, really good stuff. Check out The Cure if you haven't. That's 1987. On to 1988. 1988 happens to be uh, the, from the year, the year of the record. Ah, the record we're listening to is from 1988. And I absolutely love this record. It's, it's, so, it's so solid from beginning to end. Excellent lyrics, excellent music. It's very synthy, but it's, it's, it works for me anyway. It's like, I love cleaning to this record. I just turn this one up and just, just clean away. So anyways, it's the Wild Swans, who incidentally just came in with a new album here in 2011 after a long, 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 long hiatus. It's Bringing Home the Ashes. This record is highly, highly recommended. Honestly, this is just, a, just an amazing, amazing record from start to finish. A must have. This is a promo copy too. But someone stupidly underlined the songs that they like. And it looks like they liked almost every one of them. So, or maybe it was the ones they didn't like. I don't know. But what an amazing record this is. Check it out. All right. The last record. The last record of the 80s. 1989. Oh, 
a record that was featured, well, a record from a band that was also featured by Big Star 1000, but a different, he featured a different year. I chose The Pogues, War and Peace. Or was that, or Peace and War, sorry. Yeah. Peace and Love, shit. Peace and Love, The Pogues. Even just just for uh, the tune Gridlock alone, it's made it's worth owning this record. But there's uh, other there's other amazing songs like uh, London You're a Lady. It's, this is a phenomenal record released in 1989. So the Pogues. So there you have it. There's my romp through the 80s. Hope you enjoyed it. Please comment, guys. I love hearing your. Uh, I love hearing what you have to say. I love the dialogue. I try to comment back to every comment I get. So have a great day and put on an 80s record. Thanks, Lazarus. Great, great idea for Fred. Thanks.